lovely friends, it's Margaret, and it is time to talk about what I read in October. So October, not the best reading month that I have ever had. In fact, quite possibly the worst reading month of the year. I don't know, there are still two months left, and one of them I'm trying to write a novel, so it might just, you know, things can always get worse, right? Well, I didn't get a lot of reading this, this month. If you've been on my channel for any length of time, you know that, like, a large portion of my reading is through audiobooks, and I have not been listening to those quite as much since I started my new job. Uh, I've been listening more to podcasts. Lots of podcasts. Just, just pod, that, that's just all I've wanted to listen to for the last, like, two months, and I didn't have an audiobook that was really grabbing me this month, so, or at least I didn't until recently. I've started one that is definitely, uh, I thought I was gonna have it finished, but life happened so it's not finished but i'm enjoying it and i'm happy to be reading it anyways it feels like maybe we're getting out of this slump possibly because i'm excited for all of the books that i'm going to be reading in november hence like if you haven't seen my november tbr it's up here check it out so as usual let's go ahead and get into my stats for october what few stats there are uh, in october i read three books that came to 729 pages. In regards to format, I read two physical books and one audiobook. In regards to age category, I read two adult books and one middle grade. In regards to genre, I read one fantasy, one nonfiction, and one historical fiction. Ratings wise, I read one four star book, one three star book, and one two star book. Two of those books were books that I did already own, and one of them came from the library, and that saved me a whopping $60. My favorite book of the month was Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega, and my least favorite book of the month was Women in Anglo-Saxon England and the Impact of 1066 by Christine Fell. Now that the stats are out of the way, let's talk about what I read and what I thought about it. The first book I finished in October was Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega is a middle grade fantasy book about Luceli Luna. She can see ghosts. She has a very special family that is made up of all of her family members that have died. They still live with her. Something starts happening with her ghost family and so she starts looking for a spell to save them and un accidentally unleashes some vicious spirits that then she has to go and collect before they destroy her hometown. If you like books with a little bit of a paranormal bend, if you like ghost stories or magic or magical girls, this is going to be a great book for you. Uh, if you enjoy books that are about family, I highly recommend this. Also, it's great for people who are in Florida because it takes place in St. Augustine and it just, it feels like Florida. This was super cute and super fun. I absolutely loved it. Like, after having read a very disappointing middle grade, if you check out my, what is it, September wrap up? I think you'll be able to figure out which one it is, but I'm not going to name any names, but it was disappointing. A lot of it didn't make sense. It was nice to read a middle grade where the author clearly knew what they were doing with children. I love the fact that there was actual logic behind why Lucelli and Sid are doing the things that they are doing, why they are the ones that have to fix the problem, why it can't be the adults. Like, there's actual logic and thought behind that, and they're not doing things necessarily always on their own. There are still adults to support them when they need it. Uh, I also really, really loved the family dynamic. Lucelli and her dad and her Firefly family have this great, wonderful, loving relationship, and then you also get this great relationship of Sid with Babette. We don't really see Sid's parents, like we hear that they exist, but we don't really see them, but we definitely see Sid's grandmother, Babette, a lot. It was just so nice to have two very different, but still loving families being represented in this book. It was... I loved it. It was so good. It made me so happy. I just was like, this... This, this is good parenting. This is beautiful. There were a couple of places in the middle where I felt like it was a little helter-skelter, like not all of the lines, like the lines connected, but they seemed a little choppy in places. It just like, we're going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to... And it all came around in the end, but there were just a couple of places that I think like it could have been a little smoother and less hectic plot-wise. Like what's going on around them is very hectic. But I felt like as a reader, you shouldn't necessarily feel disjointed. And there were a couple of places where I did. But it wasn't a lot. It wasn't enough that I was like, no, this plot sucks. Like, this was a really, really intriguing and interesting plot that kept you reading. I was never bored for a single moment in this book. I just, it was good. 
I enjoyed it and you should check it out and read it if you like middle grade at all because it, it's just it's like top tier middle grade fiction. I loved it. The next book that I finished in October and also the reason that I only read like three books was Women in Anglo-Saxon England and the Impact of 1066 by Christine Fell. Women in Anglo-Saxon England by Christine Fell is an adult non-fiction that just is basically about women in Anglo-Saxon England. It's just a chronicle of everything we know about women who lived in the Anglo-Saxon times from like the very beginning of what they consider the Anglo-Saxon period all the way up until the Norman Conquest in 1066. This is a book that I picked up because it's part of doing research for my NaNoWriMo project that I am doing and it gave me information. Yeah. So here is my problem with this and it's really like the next nonfiction that I picked up for this project really highlighted that because when you go into this book it's very very dense and it's not really well written if that makes sense like I mean the grammar is there and and the sentence like they are sentences the way sentences are supposed to be but I think that she could have done a lot better job of engaging the audience in her writing like not all of her points linked up properly like she would talk about someone in one chapter and then she would talk about them again in another chapter or it would feel like she was talking about someone that we had already seen but then you'd be like but that was like like it, it was so long ago that you were like i don't remember who we're talking about like there were times that i would have to there was so much rereading with this book i just had to keep I, so many times that i had to go back and like reread the sentence to figure out what the sentence was saying because it, the 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 meaning was not immediately apparent i had to put as much work into figuring out the sentences as i had to into actually reading and understanding the material. It was a slog and not, like it had good information in it and it did give me a couple of ideas that I think I'm, boo there. It did give me a couple of ideas that I think I'm going to use, but I just, it was not really the best written nonfiction book that I've ever read. It was very academic, it was very inaccessible to the reader, and I literally picked up another book that is bigger and thicker than this one and is much better written and much easier to understand. Like it was written with the reader in mind, not just imparting the information. And the final book that I read in October was Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier is a adult historical fiction. It follows Crete who ends up as a maid in Vermeer's household after her family falls on hard time. She kind of starts to notice and work with Vermeer as he works on his paintings and it just chronicles her, her journey as, as a maid in that household all the way up to the very famous painting that is depicted on the cover of the book. Obviously the main draw is if you are a fan of Vermeer or any kind of art or art history this might be a fun book for you. Also if you like historical fiction, if you like realistic fiction this is a good book for you and also if you like like reading about messy families. Mm, there's a very messy family in this book. I am almost done with that freaking list of books that my best friends or my, pe my that people chose for me. I'm one book left. I got this one. I actually was pleasantly surprised because I mean, it did go where I thought it was going to go, but it didn't go there in the way that I thought it was going to go there. And so it wasn't quite as gross and creepy as I was expecting it to be. It's still, but, but, yeah, still a little bit that I was just like, uh, ah, this girl has no good choices. And that's why I only got three stars. It really, like, it, it was a good book. It was well written. I loved how relatable Crete was as a main character, despite the fact that she lives in like the 1300s in Delft, Amst not Amsterdam, in Delft, the Netherlands. Like, she's living in a completely different time period, a completely different country, a completely different culture, and she was still kind of very relatable to me. However, I was a little bit frustrated by the fact, and this is historically accurate so I can't dock too many points, but like I was really frustrated by the fact that she just literally had no good choices by the end of the book. Like, she's got all of this stuff that is happening, and she doesn't have any really, like, she never gets to be, not her own person, but she never gets to really pursue her own dreams. And again, historically, probably not something that she is going to be able to do, but it was just kind of disheartening to see how it ended. And I think it could have been built up as a little bit better of an ending if the love interest the, was a little bit better as a love interest, but I just thought he was a jerk. Like all of the dudes in this book are, well, one of them was okay, but we only saw him for like two minutes in two separate places but all of the dudes in this book were a jerk to Crete at varying levels like from 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 assault to just just being dickish so 
I just I just wish she had had better choices in this novel. I wish that there had been some level of satisfaction and happiness for her as a character but instead you kind of more felt like she was kind of didn't have a choice and she was going into a life that she didn't really want but it was also the only option open. That is everything that I read and listened to in the month of October. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, there will be other videos over here where I talk about other things. None of them podcasts, but there'll be books and writing and stuff like that. I don't know. I haven't decided what's going over here yet. It's always a surprise to me too. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!